10 millimeter revolver versus semi-automatic pistol how much velocity do you lose with a revolver cylinder gap that's kind of a question that i've had asked quite a few times and to be honest i don't exactly know uh, but I thought I would do a test today where I take a bunch of different ammo that I happen to have lying around and, and run it through the chronograph and kind of see what we get going on here. And a lot of people are like, well, that's a four inch revolver and that's a 5.3 inch semi-auto. But you have to understand, I did some measurements on this. When you're talking a, um, a revolver, through ATF definitions, the only thing that's measured is the actual barrel length. When you're talking a semi-automatic, what's measured is also the barrel length but they also include the chamber in that measurement so this is a, a 5.3 inch glock 41 that i have converted over to 10 millimeter and when i take a some calipers and i measure the entire uh the entire barrel from muzzle to um, breech face what we have is 5.33 inches and we look at our 10 millimeter revolver, I do that exact same measurement, muzzle to breech face, what we have is 5.555 inches. So you actually have 0.255 more inches of barrel travel, which is only about a quarter inch, but a quarter inch more barrel travel in this, or in gun travel, I should say. It's not all barrel travel because some of it's through the cylinder uh, because a 10 millimeter only takes up, you know, half of that cylinder. So through the start of that cylinder out the muzzle you know it's equivalent to a 5.55 inch semi-automatic so the common comment i get is well you lose most of your velocity out the cylinder gap or you lose hundreds of feet per second i thought let's just bring out some different ammo i have lying around and run some through the revolver run some through the semi-automatic see if there's a huge difference so i got some freedom munitions x def ammunition uh, I believe that's 200 grain, but it doesn't say in the box from what I can tell. Got some arm score 10 millimeter, 180 grain full metal jacket. I have a few rounds of this um, Buffalo Board Dangerous game, solid copper rounds. I have some ARX 10 millimeter. Um, I don't even think they make that anymore. It's a polymer bullet. I got some old school Winchester silver tip, 175 grain, some PMC bronze. 170 grain. So very basic test today. I'm just going to go through the chronograph with a semi-automatic and a revolver with pretty similar uh, bullet travel in those firearms and see if there's a big difference. So let's get started with this test. So this is a Glock 41. Right now, the only modifications I have are 10 millimeter magazines and a Lone Wolf um, 10 millimeter barrel. Um, when I used to do conversions, I would have a 22 pound spring in this and also an extractor for 10 millimeter. I found that that didn't really make any difference. Plus I'm only doing this test today with the 10 millimeter. It never runs reliably, so I'm not going to keep it in this configuration. I'm just doing this for this test. So first up we have some Freedom Munitions 200 grain. I don't know what the rate of velocity is on any of these really, but it doesn't really matter because we're just seeing, you know, from the semi-automatic with about the same amount of bullet travel in the firearm. If there's a huge difference in the revolver with the cylinder gap, so. Let's see if we get through our semi-auto with our 200 grain 10 millimeter. One thousand sixty-nine. Yeah, and you can see why <laughs> I don't use this conversion. This thing does not run right because the lone wolf barrel's feed ramp is just super tiny. And I got tired of getting a lot of comments about getting a different 10 millimeter. But we'll keep going here. 1056. 1086. 1059. 1081. 1061. So the comments I were getting were saying basically I'm going to lose like at least 200 feet per second with this. Let's see what I actually get here. 1022. 1054, 1039, 1039, 1025, 1010. So yeah, on average, there's definitely some loss there. Uh, but, you know, I haven't done the numbers, obviously, uh, but just going from memory, it looks like maybe 50 feet per second difference. Uh, but this is just one ammo. Let's try something different. I already got some arm score, 180 grain. Let's run this to the semi-automatic and see what we get here. 1100. 
1155, so pretty good velocity for what that is. Let's run those same rounds here through our revolver. Eleven twenty seven. Eleven oh eight. Eleven twenty three. Eleven thirty nine. So I'd say pretty close to about the same um, you know difference between the semi automatic and the revolver with this ammo versus that um, freedom ignition stuff. So let's try something different. All right, we have our ARX Inceptor. I would take a guess and say this is going to have a lot of velocity loss because it's such a light, short bullet and the bullet's gonna leave past the cylinder gap faster than others, but let's see what we get here. This is a 90 grain bullet. Wow, that's light. Let's see if we get in our semi-auto. 1840, wow. 1797. 1785, 1878. That has very little recoil as well. I felt like shooting a nine millimeter. Let's see if we get in our revolver here. 1694, 1673, 1650, 1632. So yeah, like I was thinking quite a bit of velocity loss with a very light bullet. Uh, let's try something different. All right, we got some old school Winchester silver tip 175 grain. I believe this box is from 1992 or in that range. So let's see what we get here with our silver tip through our semi automatic. 1211, 1214, 1215. 1175, 1226. Let's see if we get in our revolver here. 1141, 1173, 1177, 1165, 1164. So much like everything else that's in a normal bullet weight, we're losing uh, a little bit of per second there probably 40 to 50. let's try something else all right we got our pmc bronze 170 grain just gonna run a couple rounds of these let's see what we get with our pmc bronze here 1137 let's see if we get in our revolver here 1073 32 not very consistent got one more to run now last up we have our buffalo bore dangerous game heavy 10 millimeter 190 grain mono metal rate right at 1200 feet per second 607 foot pounds energy i would say this is the most legit ammo and i would take the result from this you know more than i would every other ammo because you know that ammo is not loaded particularly hot this stuff is loaded pretty good for 10 millimeters so Let's see what we get in our semi auto with this. 1207. 11.75. <clears throat> 12.08. You know, the magazines are falling out, things jamming up. And that's why I quit using this. Because I, I got tired of dealing with that. And this is so much easier. Because we we are not going to see a stovepipe jam with this. But let's see what we get for our velocity here. 1143. 1165. 
11 18 so very inconsistent velocity with that so what i'm seeing from this test is i would say we're getting about a 50 feet per second loss on average which can be a lot but at the same time we're talking 10 millimeter if you're already at you know let's say 550 foot pounds well, let's just say you're at 600 foot pounds if you take that 600 foot pounds and now you only got 575 foot pounds you know that's kind of one of those things where you're not going to really drop below expansion thresholds of hollow points and stuff like that so you know the reason why overall why i got the 10 millimeter revolver is i was okay with dealing with a little bit of cylinder gap if i could run every type of ammo without worrying about whether it's going to run or not a lot of people say, well, it's kind of stupid to get a 10 millimeter revolver. I disagree. I think it, with certain things, there are exceptions to rules. Like with nine millimeter, I got a nine millimeter Taurus snub nose revolver. I think that is kind of silly when you can get, you know, a nine millimeter pistol that's just as small and you're going to have a little more velocity. You know, what you're gaining by going to a revolver is pretty much nothing. When you talk about 10 millimeter, a lot of different issues come up that you know can be cured by a revolver and some of the the issues of you know ballistics also are not a problem like with nine millimeter nine millimeter through let's say a three inch semi-automatic compared to a two inch revolver it's kind of silly to get that because if you're right at expansion threshold with hollow points you could go from having ammo that performs fine in that uh, little snub nose like a three inch barrel pistol, but then you put it in a two inch snub nose, it's not going to get hollow point expansion, stuff like that. When you're talking 10 millimeter and you're talking going from, you know, 600 to 575 foot pounds or 575 down to 550 foot pounds, it doesn't really make a whole lot of difference. So I'm okay with losing just a little bit of velocity if I can gain some reliability. And here's the thing with YouTube, there's so many people that say, well, you can get this semi-automatic pistol. Why would you get that revolver? You can get this one, you can get that one. And, and then they'll tell me, well, they're all 100% reliable. It's you that's having a problem because you're limp wristing, et cetera, et cetera. And then I watch a lot of videos of people shooting Glock 20s, shooting new M&Ps. I'll condense down everything I'm seeing as a whole here. What will happen is people will shoot these, these guns with target ammo and jacket hollow point ammo and they'll do fine. And then, but then you go to the people that are legitimately in, in Alaska, there's a whole bunch of channels up there where they're testing ammo that they're going to use in 10 millimeter for bear defense and stuff like that. And they'll shoot them through the new MMPs, they'll shoot them through the high points, so even through the Glock 20 sometimes. And there's a lot of rounds that won't function. They'll get all kinds of malfunctions with those heavy rounds. So I wanted to pick up something that would not get a malfunction if I shot a 220 Korean hard cast and would not get a malfunction if I limp wrist it, would not get a malfunction with a weird hollow point design. As a YouTube ammo tester, you know, it's not easy to come out and do these videos. It costs a lot of money. So when you come out and you're trying to do a video, you've got $100 into that video, and then you, you shoot a couple rounds, you get a malfunction, and then you get a whole bunch of comments of people trolling you about that malfunction, how you're limp wristing. It just it's really really annoying and it's just something that i wanted to avoid so i wanted to get a a 10 millimeter revolver because to me it made a lot of sense so yes we're gonna have to look at this information and come to a conclusion that you know this much is probably how much you're losing uh, and probably add that to some of the conclusions in my ballistic test but at the same time like i was saying this is a lot different than like let's say nine millimeter or 45 acp revolver where if you drop 50 feet per second, you may very well drop below an expansion or penetration threshold and have a complete failure of that ammo. And there's really no reason to do that when you're talking nine millimeter 45, where generally you're not gonna have malfunctions with those calibers or 40 Smith & Wesson. 10 millimeter, two things here. You're going to increase the chances of getting malfunction, so it's good to have a revolver. And two, you're well, well, well above those thresholds. So to me, it was worth it to, to get a little bit less velocity because you're still going to get all the performance you, you would have normally got anyway. But you're not dealing with the, any malfunctions with a wide gamut of ammo. And that's important to someone like me who's doing this testing, ballistic testing, and doing it regularly to have things running smooth. So simple as that. 
So that's what you get today. Interesting test here, and it's good to know. And what, like I was thinking, you know, when you get a little bit more normal average bullet weights, you lose not a whole lot. So one thing I'm looking just from memory here, really short bullets, really light bullets, you lose a lot. Heavy, heavy, heavy loaded bullets, you lose a good amount, but looks like the 170 to the 180 grain at normal velocities, you're not losing a ton there. So interesting test today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.